you know that we can describe a function in four different ways. Verbally, numerically, algebraically and graphically. For functions from R to R, you have learned how to convert these different prescriptions into each other. But how can you do that for a linear transformation for, say, R2 to R2? You learned how to find an algebraic description using the standard matrix. But how does this work in an explicit example? And how can you represent such a transformation graphically? You will learn all of this in this video. Let's use a verbal description of a transformation first. The linear transformation T from R2 to R2 rotates points counterclockwise about its origin through an angle theta. So we start with the verbal description equation. How can we find the standard matrix of T? So how can we find the uh, algebraic description of this transformation? Well, we have learned the theorem t of x equals a t times x, where the matrix a t can be found by computing the images of e1 and e2. So that's what we are going to do. We are going to compute the t of e1 first, and then we are going to compute the t of e2. So let's see. Here, the red factor is e1. Now, the transformation rotates factors counterclockwise around origin about an angle theta. So E1 is rotated to the blue vector, the T of E1, over here. Now this blue vector has components A and B, so the T of E1 equals AB. Well, what are A and B? Well, it depends on theta, obviously. Well, the cosine of theta equals A over the length of the blue vector. But if I rotate factors, the length doesn't change. The length of the red factor is 1. That's why we put the additional circle over here. The length stays the same. So the length of the blue vector is still 1. So the cosine of theta equals A over 1. So A equals cosine theta. So the x component of the blue vector equals cosine of theta. Then y component B sine theta equals B over 1. So B equals sine theta, so AB equals cosine theta, sine theta. So the T of E1 equals cos theta, sine theta. That's E1. Continue to E2. Slightly harder. Okay, we have the E2. We draw again the circle because we rotate, so the length will stay the same. And here we have the T of E2. And let's uh, call the, the component C, D. So T of E2 equals C, D. What about them? Well, if we look again at the triangle over here, then the uh, uh, cosine of theta, with the theta over here, equals this length over 1. This length is exactly D, so D is cosine theta over there. Now, here we have to be a bit careful. The sine of theta equals the size of c over 1, so the length of c equals sine theta, but we go to the left, so we go to minus sine theta. So the image of this point over here equals minus sine theta and cosine theta up. So that's the t of e2. And then we can form the at by just plugging these two vectors in the matrix. And there we have the standard matrix of this transformation. Of course, you can learn a formula like this by heart, but what's the use of that? Try to remember how to do this geometrically. Try to learn the procedure. Try to understand what you're doing. Then can you, and if you understand what you're doing, then you can easily find the matrix back. Now to summarize, so we have four ways to describe a function. Verbally, over here, on star. Algebraically, over here, via the matrix of the transformation. Numerically, well, by making a table of input and output values. So x and t of x as uh, columns of a table. x is e and e1 and e2, and t of x is. This is not a very nice way to summarize uh, the transformation. Okay. Graphically, 
is a bit hard because you have a transformation from R2 to R2. So if you want to plot that in one figure, it's kind of problematic because you would need two axes for the independent variables and two axes for the dependent variables. Four axes cannot draw that, cannot do that. So what we usually do is that we are slightly uh, 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 are using the axis twice. We use the x and the y axis both for the independent and for the dependent variables. Well, that tends to become a bit of a mess. So what do we do? We plot the e1 and the e2, like here on the axis, and only the images of e1 and e2 over here, in order to give an idea graphically of how transformation looks. And you see that it rotates uh, around origin. Uh, why only t of e1 and t of e2? Well, because it's sufficient. If you have a transformation from R2 to R2, you only need to specify the T of E1 and the T of E2.